say I love that song. That's one of my favorites. Just like the movie Willy Wonka with uh, Gene Wilder. I believe that's what it was in, wasn't it? Pure Imagination. Yeah, beautiful song. A sage once said, if you knew how much God loved you, you would die for joy. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of love, isn't it? That's a lot of love. This presence and activity, the sages tell us, you know, brought us into the world. It's not only brought us into the world, it's being us in the world, right? It's expressing as us, like the oceans being the wave. Spirit is our very self. How could it not love us? First John says that God is love. God is love. So that presence is love. It holds us to the earth. It causes our hearts to beat. It breathes our lungs. And it's ever seeking to unfold as greater good in our life. In our life. And today we're continuing key number three from Reverend John Strickland's book, Think, Feel, and Heal. And we talked about last week the first two keys. We said the first two keys was first key, being thankful in advance. Essentially developing an attitude of gratitude. Being grateful for the good that's in our life. Developing this attitude of focusing on the good that's already in our life. I mean, isn't that what gratitude really is? You've got to focus on the good in your life in order to feel grateful about it. And the opposite would be always thinking about what I don't have, what I wish were different, what's wrong in my life, what, well, you know, critical, being critical, and so on about what's lacking and wanting. And you know, there's been studies about the different effects that has on us. And focusing on the good in our life is a way to magnify the good and you know, how we feel and what we tend to attract. So that was key number one. And he talks a little bit about praise, too, which we talked about last week. And then key number two is believe that healing is possible. Do you believe healing is possible in your life? You believe it's possible to have healing in your relationships, healing in your finances, healing in your physical body. A lot of you said yes. That's a key thing for us. That's a key to believe and understand that spirit can only do for us what spirit can do through us. So if we don't even believe, if we're not even open to the possibility, then what chance is there? How can it happen if we don't even we're not even open to it. Olga Butterworth, the late Olga Butterworth, used to talk about saying yes to your good. Saying yes, which is being open. That spirit is seeking to express through us. Be saying yes to it. That's believing that is possible. So today we want to talk about key number three, which is, in John Strickland's words, love is the answer the only answer. Hmm. Now, love is an interesting topic, isn't it? Love is an interesting topic. And we're going to talk about uh, love in a way that's not, un that's not commonly talked about. Because most of us are conditioned to believe in the love that we see in the movies. How many of you like romantic comedies? Don't we all... <laughs> Most people like romantic comedies. Most of us like when two people, two individuals see each other and they're drawn together by this irresistible attraction and there's a spark of love and, you know, it's, it, we all love that. We're going to talk about a deeper aspect of love today. We're talking about the love, the source of all love. And the source of all love is what? Spirit. God. And it's not like God is up there who, who loves us and God is up there and gives us love. No, the source of all love is spirit, is God. There's a great quote in John's book, Think, Feel, and Heal, where on page 40 of this book, 
he says, God is not a man or even a superman who loves. God is love itself. God is the love a parent feels for a newborn child. God is the love um, a child feels for a parent nearing the end of his life. God is not one who loves. God is love itself. Now, that's a big idea. God, is, now God isn't just one that loves. God is love itself. God is love itself. In the book, The Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, the great yogi sage, he talks about when he was a little boy and his mother died. He was so heart-stricken. He really struggled and suffered when his mother died. And one day he had a, a spiritual vision. And spirit spoke to Yogananda and said, I was the love that saw through your mother's eyes. And I've been the love through lifetimes for you, through many mothers, through many lifetimes, if you believe in many lifetimes. I've been that love through many mothers, through many lifetimes. In other words, he was getting the message, yes, your physical mother is no longer here, but recognize that I am the love that loved through that mother. Isn't that a neat idea? That when we really love someone, that love is God's love. That love is God's love. Think of someone who has been very important to you in your life, who you loved so much or love so much and they love you so much. That love is spirit. That love is God's love flowing through them to you. And I've, I've read sages talking about, you know, dogs and how loving they are. I think I might have said this last week. That they're, an ex they're, they're a demonstration for human beings of that unconditional love. That love is even through pets, you know. So the point here is that's the love we're really seeking. That love that we really want is the presence and activity, to feel it, to know it, because it's expressing as us. That's the love that the sages talk about all the time, cultivating that connection with spirit, that connection with source, really knowing who we really are as spiritual beings. And if we don't know that love, what's going to happen? We're going to look out there for it. We're going to try to find someone who, who's going to love us the way we need to be loved. We're going to try to find someone who is the soulmate. We're going to try to find, you know, the right partner or whatever it is to get the, to fill that empty space inside of us. And what's going to happen? No one can ever love us enough. No one can ever love us as much as we need it. The only thing that can really ever fill that empty place is discovering that presence and activity of love that's expressing in and through and as us. It's finding that inner love. And the great part about that is when we find that inner love, that love attracts. I mean, when someone is loving and radiating love, you're drawn to it, aren't you? People get drawn to that. And when we are so filled with that love of our true nature, we want to share it. So we're not saying don't get in relationships. We're not saying, you know, don't, don't uh, have a life partner or a soulmate or anything like that. We're saying discover how much God loves you. Discover your unity, your oneness with that love as Jesus discovered it, as Buddha discovered it, as Moses discovered it, as Krishna discovered it, as other great saints and sages have discovered it, because you can too. 
That's what they meant. What I've done, you can do and greater. Because if we don't cultivate that love, what's going to happen? You already know. <laughs> you already know, don't you? I'm talking to the choir. I'm not talking to, uh, well, I might be, uh, younger folks. <laughs> but, you know, we, we know what's going to happen. No one's ever going to fill that inner space inside of us. They're never going to be the way we need them to be. There's always going to be something that's not right. Anybody know that from personal experience? A couple honest people in a group? <laughs> yeah, no one's ever going to be, you know, act exactly the way we need them to be or we think they need to be and show up the way that we want them to show up. Nobody. Never. Everybody's different. Everybody's got a different background. Everybody has different habits. You know, oh, I'm going to meet my soulmate and everything's going to click and be perfect and all that. Wayne Dyer used to talk about, that's not your soulmate. Wayne Dyer used to talk about your soulmate's the one that really challenges you. Whoa. In fact, John Strickland quotes Wayne Dyer in his book. He uh, Here's a quote from Your Erroneous Zones. Any of y'all read Your Erroneous Zones? That was Wayne Dyer's big first big hit. He traveled around the country in a van getting on radio shows for the Erroneous Zones. And uh, he says, Love is the ability and willingness to allow those that you care about to be what they choose for themselves without any insistence that they satisfy you. <gasps> Should I read that again? Love is the ability and willingness to allow those that you care about to be what they choose for themselves without any insistence that they satisfy you. That's a great quote. But you know how challenging that is to live? I don't even know if Dr. Dyer knew how challenging that was. To live. That's a challenging thing to live. Because when you're, when we're, and most of us are, let's face it, 99.99% of the human race is out there trying to get somebody to be for them what they need them to be in order to feel loved. And so if you're trying to get someone to be the way you need them to be for you to feel loved, you're not letting them be who they are, are you? Now, I'm not saying there's not a place for us to talk to someone about things and, you know, to negotiate stuff in the relationship. Because let's face it, we're all growing. We all have our humanness to deal with. And none of us is going to go from where we are to sainthood in one leap. Right? So we're constantly working with ourselves. We're working with other people. We're working with where am I and what can I do to, to, to open up to my spiritual nature, to, to discover that inner wholeness and love. And where do I need to negotiate with this person and communicate with this person, right? We're working with our humanness and where we are and where we want to go. Here's the thing, though. If we're not really committed to seeking first the kingdom, if we're not really committed to knowing our spiritual nature as love, then it's so easy to get drawn into being upset about why that person isn't in my life, being upset about why they're not behaving the way we want them to behave and, and why they're not, you know, getting insecure about what, you know, what they're doing, what they're not doing. And that's our humanness. So here's the deal. I believe the spiritual path is to be whole, complete, happy, content, fulfilled, 
within ourselves in every moment. How many of you would like that in your life? Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. I mean, what is heaven if it's not that? Right? What's, what's heaven if it's not being happy, being joyful, being loving, being content in every moment? And what are we doing? We're running around trying to find the soulmate, the this, the that, the, the other thing to try to get that. Right? That's what we're doing most of the time. And that's understandable because that's what we were raised to do. That's what we see in the movies. That's what we get on advertising all around us. That's what Paul meant. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your, of your mind or being renewed from within. That's what most of us are doing. The spiritual journey, however, the deepest spiritual journey, I think the real spiritual journey, is anything that tempts us to try to go out there to get something to fulfill our inner needs, psychological needs, we need to relax and let go of. at least look at and go, wait a minute. I don't need someone in order to feel love. I don't need a partner, a spouse, in order to feel whole and loved. I don't need, if we're in a relationship, I don't need my spouse or partner to be a certain way in order for me to feel loved and whole. That's spiritual growth. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to have a conversation with the partner or spouse or whatever about stuff. But my first go-to is what I just said. I am whole. I am joy. I am love. I am happiness. I am fulfilled. God is, is my source. And now when I communicate from that space, is that going to be different, a different communication? Isn't that going to be a different communication? Amen. That's different than, you know, I'm upset because we talked about this and you, you need to call me at a certain time and, you know, you didn't hug and kiss me when you came in the house and... You know, where were you and all that stuff that goes on in a relationship? You know, why were you looking at him like that? You know, whatever. All the insecurities and all that stuff. That's very going to be very different when we're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm here to grow spiritually. That's why I'm here on the planet right now. That's my commitment. I'm going to grow spiritually, and spiritual growth is about, wait a minute, I'm feeling insecure, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling angry, I'm, whatever's going on inside of me, and I acknowledge it. And I realize, I go, wait a minute, I'm not going to try to change that person. I'm not going to try to run out and make something out there to make me feel better. How many of you know somebody, when they feel upset inside, they're going to run out there and try to make somebody different, try to change something out there in order to feel better inside? How many of you know somebody like that? How many of you know somebody like that personally? <laughs> Intimately? Yeah. No, we're talking about, wait a minute, time out, let me go inside. Let me release this blockage. Let me be aware of it. Let me feel it. Let me acknowledge that the answer is not outside. The answer is discovering that presence of love that's, that's inside of me, acknowledging that I am whole. And however we need to do that, fine. Emily Cady in the book Lessons in Truth, she talks about knowing God loves me. Saying that to yourself, thinking that God loves me, 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 God loves me. 
She said, when you do that, you're going to start feeling different. You're going to start feeling, sensing that love. And you're going to start seeing people respond to you differently. Because as within, so without. That's the metaphysical teaching, right? You're going to feel, you're going to respond differently. You're going to feel differently. And then, you know, go deeper and know that you are this love. We are this love. We are this love. Taking time to get still and quiet. When all that frustration and anger or whatever comes up, taking time to get still and quiet, taking time to be with that stuff, knowing that I'm here to let that go. Because that stuff inside of me probably is only triggered by that person. It's not caused by it. It's triggered. It's stuff from the past that's inside of me bubbling up. So let me, let me observe it. Let me feel it let, it. let me let it pass through me because I know that my true nature is whole, is love, is joy. That's what my life is about. It's about discovering that innate wholeness. Well, then you might say, well, what's the point of having a relationship then? If love is inside of me and I'm whole and complete and happy and all that's going on inside, why do I need a partner? Why do I need to get married? Why do I need friends? Why do I need relationships? Why don't I just live in a cave out somewhere? Live in a desert? You could do that. But most of us, we, we're here to grow. And there's, there's one of the best ways to grow is in relationships, isn't it? One of the best ways to grow is when somebody can push your buttons that, that are there. And the more in touch with this love, we want to share it. It's natural. We want to share it with other people, right? And uh, so, yeah, I love this quote by Eric Fromm that Reverend Strickland has in his book as well. It's from the book, The Art of Loving. Immature love says, I love you because I need you. Uh, right? Immature, I love you because I need you. Sometimes people are like, I love you. And they're really saying, I need you. I need you. You know, I'm reminded of that song by Barry Manilow. I can't smile without you. <laughs> I can't laugh, I can't sing, find it hard to do anything. <laughs> right? Remember that song? Absolutely. Golly, that's, that's codependency, isn't it? <laughs> nice song, though, you know. I saw some article in a paper where this, this uh, deli or something was having problems with people loitering, loitering. And so what they did was they started to play Barry Manilow music on the loudspeaker <laughs> outside on the sidewalk. Apparently it worked. It worked. I like Barry Manilow, but apparently it's great to get rid of loiterers, you know. So, yeah, I mean, and then he, he goes on to say, uh, immature love says, I love you because I need you. Mature love says, I need you because I love you. Hmm. That's a hmm, isn't it? I can understand that. I think, to me, what that means is when you love someone, you, you, you want to help them, you want to support them, you, you enjoy them being in your life, and that's kind of, there's a connection there. You, you do form a connection. And uh, so that's, uh, that's beautiful. The thing is, again, we're here to know that love that is within us. Because if we don't, if let's say a person's lonely. All right? Anybody ever get lonely? Say a person gets lonely. Getting a person is not going to solve. I mean, there was a woman who got married. She was lonely. She got married. And it solved her loneliness problem. I mean, at least while she was married, she felt good. Then the husband died, and guess what happened? She was lonely again. So it really didn't solve the problem. The problem is the within of us. Learning to get in touch with that presence and activity of love. 
Now, the book is Think, Feel, and Heal. What does this have to do with healing? Smiley Blanton, Dr. Smiley Blanton, wrote a book many years ago called Love or Perish. Love or Perish. If we're not in tune with love, if we're bitter, critical, resentful, hateful, bitter, what happens? We block the life force. We block the flow of life. It hurts us. It hurts us. It blocks the flow. I remember when I was in ministerial school in Missouri, one time I went to this local gas station. It was old country, old pumps on this gas station. And, and I was pumping gas into my car, a little Honda Civic. And the numbers were just going really slowly. And at first, I was like, this country gas station. <laughs> and then I was like, why is this happening? And I noticed there was a kink in the hose. I had kinked up the hose. <laughs> so when I unkinked the hose, guess what happened? The numbers started to go around a lot faster, right? And the gas started to flow. If we're bitter, resentful, angry, jealous, all that stuff, judgmental, critical, complaining, what are we doing? We're kinking up our spiritual system. We're kinking up our spiritual system. That doesn't mean we're not going to feel frustrated. That doesn't mean we're not going to have moments of being angry. That doesn't mean we're going to have moments of being critical or complaining. We're all going to have those moments, I'm pretty sure unless we're living in a, a glass bubble somewhere. We're going to have those moments, but the question is, are we going to acknowledge them, acknowledge how we feel, and then move on? And in that moment, there's some frustration, there's some criticalness, there might be some judgmentalism. You know, are we going to be able to acknowledge that and go, okay, yeah, I see that going on in my mind, in my heart. Let me change my focus. Or are we going to buy into that? Are we going to get into that and then we're going to jump, lose ourselves in our thoughts and in our feelings and now we're going to talk about it all day long. We're going to talk, you know what he said to me the other day and we're going to tell this person and that person and the other person and we're just going to constantly think about it and, and let it torment us. Now what are we doing? We're kinking up the hose. We're blocking the flow of healing life. We're blocking the flow of healing life. And there are a lot of stories of people who were struggling with health issues and turns out there was someone in their life they didn't forgive, they were bitter about. Sometimes they're themselves. That's a future key. We're going to get to that key in a few weeks. But it all relates back to love. Love being the answer. The only answer, as John Strickland says, love being the answer. So what we've said today is love is our true essence. It's our true nature. Let's make a commitment to get to know that love, that nurture that relationship with spirit, nurture that connection with source. I mean, do whatever you need to do. If you want to talk to God, talk to God. Have conversations with, with God. Somebody wrote a book about that. Conversation with God. Have a conversation with spirit. Talk to spirit. You, you know, yes, you are an expression of it. There's nothing wrong with talking to that presence as well, right? It is you and it's greater than you. Having that connection. Now, you know, you're never lonely when you have that connection. You're never lonely because you always feel like there is a presence with you, no matter what. You talk to it. It's, it's, it, it's seeking to, to bless you. It's seeking to flow through you in greater ways. You're never lonely that way. You're, you, you always know that you have a companion with you all the time. If you want to make it more finite, this infinite presence, that works for me. I'm happy talking to the infinite presence, but some people need something more finite, right? If you need to talk to Jesus, because Jesus was a 
perfect expression of that presence, right? Perfect expression of that presence. If you need to talk to Jesus or Moses or, or Krishna or Buddha or Kuan Yin or uh, 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 Captain Marvel, well, maybe not Captain Marvel, <laughs> but, uh, you know, whatever that personification that you can relate to, in order to cultivate that awareness and that relationship and that connection, then do it. Do it. But ultimately, it comes back to the within of you. That that presence is not only out here, but it's also in and as you. Learning to unblock yourself so that you can feel more of that flow. When you feel anger, when you feel frustration, when you feel jealous, when you feel bitter, when you feel whatever might be going on inside of you, to acknowledge it, to allow it to flow through you because you're here to unblock yourself. Rather than to go, okay, I need to make him be different. Or, oh, that's it, I need somebody. I'm lonely, I need somebody. Let me get online and, you know, sign up to whatever and whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. But what we're saying is, first step, most important step, you and I are here to unblock ourselves. You and I are here to grow spiritually. You and I are here to not be a victim of our emotions, of our mind, of the world. You and I are here to free ourselves, right? You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You and I are here to free ourselves. This is the lifetime to do that. Not some future lifetime. Not we've done that enough. You've been there. You've done that. You've done all this stuff before, I believe. This is not new for you. We're here to, to grow and to be free now. And so let's make that the first choice, to, to discover that love inside of us and to free ourselves, to make that choice. Love is the answer. That's key number three to healing. The more we, we free up ourselves, the more we let go of those burdens, because guess what? All that stuff that's inside of us that we're carrying around, that's a burden. That's a burden. We're weighing ourselves down. That energy that could be freed up to heal us, to prosper us, to strengthen us, that energy is all tied up in keeping that junk down there. Because the junk is in there, and it wants to come up. That's why it comes up. We think it's coming up because of the way that person spoke to us. No, it's already there. Because if, if you didn't already have that anger inside of you, what that person said wouldn't bother you. You'd be like, well, they must be having a bad day. I love you, I bless you, and I appreciate you. You know, we'd be like, oh, poor thing. You know, we feel we'd be compassionate. Instead, we're like, I can't believe you talked to me like that. Who are you talking to? You know, <laughs> that's because we got junk inside of us. So we got to free that stuff up. Let it flow through us. And that's what this key number three is all about. So that we can begin to tune in to that presence and activity of love that's always there, always holding us, always seeking to unfold through us and as us. And, um, and I'm sticking with that message today. Let's get still. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for your reminders today that we are loved by you, that we live in your love, that you love us, that you are expressing in and through and as us this day, every moment of the day. It is your pleasure to express through and as us. And how blessed we are. How important we are. Important, not necessarily to the world, but important to God, important to spirit, important to life. Life believes in us so much that it's expressing as us that you are important to spirit. You are spirit. You are the expression of spirit on the planet. You are valuable. You are important. You don't need to prove that to anybody else. You don't need anybody else to approve of you. You are valuable. You are important. Whatever your life looks like right now. 
You are valuable. You are important. You are loved. Exactly as you are. And in fact, you are love itself. You are love itself. And you and I are on a journey to discover that. And we thank you, Father, Mother, God, for guiding and directing us in this journey, for reminding us of who we are, reminding us of who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is.